Yeah. So let me ask you this. How big is your real estate portfolio now? Like how many millions of dollars in real estate negotiations have you been involved with estimated to date in your entire real oh, estate? Oh, like all the transactions I've done? I would say probably seven, eight hundred million. Wow. Yeah. Well, right. Again, you know, timing yeah. is everything in real <laughs> yeah. estate. Yeah. So I have sold, you know, most of my real estate assets, not most, about half of it. And in the past, you know, 18 months. And, you know, I'll be, I'll be missing in some of these cars because I think they're better bet than real estate because real estate's kind of ballooned. You know, most asset classes are ballooned. So, you know, I double down always in recessions. So I'm raised quite a bit of cash and I'm waiting for exactly. the next shoe to drop, which you will. Which is interesting because Tony Robbins actually talks about, they say that, that more millionaires and billionaires uh, build their wealth in times of recession yep. than any other time. Yeah. Because yeah. that's where most people run. They say where people are running, that's where the most money is made. Yep. You walk to where people are running. Exactly. <laughs> Wherever they're running away yeah. from, you run towards it. Yeah. You got to yeah. be a contrarian. Yeah, contrarian. And that's why my book title is my first book. Contrarian yeah. playbook. I love it. And yeah. Now, let me ask you this. A lot of people wrote in uh, about this interview and they said they wanted to know what are Manny's top three tips when it comes to negotiation? Obviously, you know, being in, uh, you know, over seven, seven, eight hundred million dollars worth of real estate negotiations, you learn some tricks of the trade. Yeah. So what are, you know, one or two or three of your best tips when it comes to being an effective communicator and negotiator sure. in business? Well, most importantly, you got to give to get. So first you see what's important to the seller or other party, right? So if they're in a rush and there's a dispute, there's a divorce, so closing, you know, term of the closing is very you mm -hmm. know, important, then you just shrink your, you know, your term and so that three months has grown a big building, you know, you can close in 15 days. And sometimes, you know, and I've done that many times where I went and got a bridge loan and so getting a traditional loan, it cost me a couple of points, but I got three million bucks off, you know, on the property. So yeah. maybe I spent 200 grand in the loan fees extra I got a bridge loan, which is a sometimes private loan, but that was a huge value to the seller because they wanted to close sooner. So always find out what's, what's critical for the other party. So give that to them and get something in return. So it's give and get, you know. Uh, number two, uh, do your research. You know, when you're doing it, you know, if you got comps, you know, you're buying a property, do your research. A lot of brokers are lazy. I hate to say it. You know? even, even, at, even at big price points? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Are there ever times where you look at a real estate portfolio that's maybe 20, 30, 40, 50 million bucks and you're like, how are they this off on a property this way? And then yeah. find an opportunity in that? Does that happen a lot? Yeah. I just bought a building uh, six months ago in Huntington Beach for 10 million. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I'm looking on LoopNet and I'm like, this is priced so low. There's got to be some kind of environmental sort of <laughs> <condition laughs> something, right? Something, yeah. So I call the broker and I'm like, okay, what's the hair on this deal? Because there's no hair. I'm like, okay, clear title. Is there any structural damage, any soil condition, contamination? He's like, no, no, no. The fund bought it and they were going to redevelop it. And then they realized, you know, it's not panning out. They let go of a lot of the tenants because they were going to tear it down. So the occupancy is down, but now the fund, the partners want, want out. So that's a perfect scenario. <laughs> yeah. Grossly mismanaged, location's great, and there's a lot of meat on the bone. So I bought that for under 200 bucks a foot, and within two months, I, I'm s selling it for $1.7 million more. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's and almost... so you gotta, you gotta find that value, you know? There's yeah, value. Yeah. I love that. Now let me ask you this. Um, a lot of people might look at your success and think like, yeah, maybe Manny could do it, but it's not possible for me, right? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people, you, you probably get a lot of messages all the time. But for somebody at home watching this or maybe somebody listening to the podcast inspired by your story, what would be your best advice to them when it comes to feeling like, man, like I have these dreams, but I don't know how it's going to happen. You know, you talked earlier in the interview about, you know, it's more important to know what than how. Can you just shed some light as to like, you know, what's the ratio of knowing what you want versus actually having to know how in advance? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So like well, what light could you yeah. shed on that? Yeah, well, of course, you know, when I started, you know, selling junk from, you know, dumpsters <laughs> in the swap meet, I didn't know I'm going to own all these cars on real yeah, estate. Yeah. I didn't even know I'm going to end up being a real estate investor, you know. Uh, don't worry about, you know, five, ten years from now. Worry about, worry about how can you improve today, you know, improve yourself mentally, physically, with people around you, and even your job, you know. Always be look out, you know, on, on a better opportunity. And then eventually you'll get there. If you're striving for a higher ground, you're going to get there. 
but you don't have to worry about how you're going to get on all to top of the mountain right now, mm -hmm. you know? Just do baby steps, you know, as stepping stones, you know? Yeah. And that's what I would say, you know, don't have that anxiety. A lot of people are trying to figure the whole thing out right now, today. Yeah. And that's a mistake, you know? Just know that it's going to take time, and if you put your best foot forward, and you have your subconscious, it's going to do the rest. Mm. I love that. Now, being on this side of the fence, was it easier than you thought, harder than you thought? What are some insights that, you know, being on this side of the fence, the 14-year-old you would have wished mm -hmm. he knew about how to get here? You mean if, if it was easier than I thought? Yeah. You mean? Uh, no, it was much harder than I thought. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, the, like, I, the guy that screwed me on the loan for gas station, I mean, he took all my money. Right. Like, you know, at age 19, 20, I'm basically bankrupt. And then again, with Food for Less open next to me, I was bankrupt. I was, for 18 months, I was bouncing checks. And, you know, I used to go to Wells Fargo before 4 p.m. to take whatever from cash registers to put in so I don't get overdrawn. <laughs> and then I used yeah. to go 9 a.m. at Wells Fargo to, put, to cover the overdrawn because I was overdrawn. <laughs> You know, to just make to sure they, don't, yeah, they, just... they, they bounce the least amount of checks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was a constant vicious cycle I did for 18 months. It, you know, most people would say, fuck, I mean, they would give up, right? Yeah. No, just absolutely. for bankruptcy. They're like, what's the point? I mean, you're not going to win. Yeah. You know? No, it's so true. But you'll find a way. Now, let me ask you this. What's the best piece of advice you got on your way up? Invest in real estate. What's the worst piece of advice you got? Worst piece. Mm. Don't drink and drive. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, you know, it's fun to like celebrate your uh, success. Go out with your friends, party, do ball service. You know, all that stuff is all he's gonna do is slow you down. You know, at first it's fun, but you know, drinking excessive alcohol, you know, drugs. I don't do drugs. You know, but I used to, you know you know, party with my friends, go out, do ball service. Most, most people yeah. did when they made a lot of money, right? Yeah, yeah. You're young, dumb, and you know what? <laughs> you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So I would say, you know, um, you know, just focus on the bigger picture as you're climbing the mountain and invest in real estate and ignore the noise. There's always noise around you, always. Whether it's your own siblings or your friends, there's always people doubting you. You know why? Because... That's the, their mentality, you know, they think that you can't do it and, you know, you call them haters, call them whatever you want. Yeah. I call them dollars, but, you know, dollar, dollars never, you know, uh, you know, discourage me, you know. They actually encourage me because I love showing them how it's done. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. Now, let me ask you this. Before we wrap up here, just two more questions, then we play a little game. All right. Um, but I, I wanted to ask, for the people out there that, you know, maybe are stuck in a rut or maybe they're in the challenging times that you once were. Aside from never giving up, what insight could you give to them about maybe a time in your life where things were especially tough? You know, maybe something you haven't shared before. What are some, you know, a lot of people might see you here in the back cave feeling like, oh, yeah. man, he probably doesn't have that many insecurities or he's yeah. conquered them all. What are some insecurities to date that you still deal with or some challenges day to day um, that you still deal with or maybe something that you've dealt with that maybe you haven't shared before that's been challenging? And the reason I ask is just to share the human side of you to mm -hmm. people out there who, you know, might want to hear that and be like, oh, shit, man, he's just like me. Yeah. Maybe if he's still dealing with it, maybe I can conquer my yeah. too. Absolutely. Well, I guess I, I'm, I'm a shy person in general. You know, I mean, this is my first podcast I've done in my life. I love it. What do you think so, of it so far? It's great. <laughs> but, you know, I had a little bit of anxiety, you know, yeah. nervousness. You do because you're on camera and you don't know, you yeah. know. If, you know, you got booger in your nose or you're too, <laughs> you got gum on your shoes. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> totally, yeah. But what I say, you know, crush your fears. You know, whatever your fears are, as you face them and you overcome them, of course, you know, anyone that does anything for the first time, it, you know, it's a little scary, you know, whether it's doing skydiving or, you know, jumping in the ocean for the first time, you know, mm -hmm. if you got fear of sharks, you know. Yeah, yeah. So, absolutely. but it's amazing the feeling you get afterwards. You know, like I'm, I know for a fact I'm going to go to lunch and have an amazing feel, <laughs> feeling after, you know, doing this podcast. I love that. It's a great experience. So, you know, face your, you look at them as, as, as experiences, not as, you know, something terrible, like, you know, scary, you know. And uh, so I would say, you know, that's probably, you know, one of the key factors to improving yourself is facing your fears. If you guys enjoyed that video, be sure to hit that subscribe button right now 
because every week we bring you the very best in personal development content, interviews, and insight to help inspire you to take your life and your dreams and make them a reality. And also, if you want to know how to book dream guests the same way I have, you can check the link below for my top three secrets. So if you have a podcast or a show or whatever it is and you want to collaborate with them, if you click that link below, I'll give you those top three secrets to help you get in touch with anybody. And also, don't forget that the Passionate View is available on media platforms as well. So you can subscribe to the podcast. And until next time, thank you for being one of the Passionate Few.